here is the Sync Tall Growth System. So this is led by yours truly. Um, and so let's, let's hop right into it. So for those of you that may not know me, my name is Zach Carney. Uh, I work with staff as a recruitment and growth coordinator. So my entire mind, my entire world, my entire everything is recruitment. So, you know, where we're going next, you know, what's our expansion plan look like? Uh, you know, it's not entirely up to me, but I have a say in that. Uh, supporting our chapters, trying to figure out how do we recruit in a digital world? How do we continue to keep the wheels turning? And so I'm a brother from the Epsilon Tall chapter, which is at UNC Charlotte. So i got to give a big old roll niners, you know, shout out to my guys out there. So proud Charlotte alumna and uh, really happy to be here. So if you ever need anything from me, this is also my personal email for work and uh, my personal cell phone as well. So if you ever need me or want to follow up or get some extra support, you know, that's where to find me. So that's a little bit about who I am. So fellas, you may be wondering, what is the SIGTAL growth system? Zach, I've never heard of that. Well, I'm here to tell you that the SIGTAL growth system is a systemized plan of attack and it is a uni universally adopted and accepted system that we as SIGTAL implement when it comes to our membership and our recruitment efforts. This is the growth system that we put into place when we do our expansions. This is the, the baseline of what we try to teach our chapters when they come to Web Academy. And the beautiful thing is, no matter what size chapter you are, whether you're in, in single digits or if you're an 80-man chapter or if you're like our Arizona State chapter, which is the largest at over 110, this is a system that you can adopt, you can break down into simple steps, and it can be applicable, applicable to you, your campus, and your chapter. So all in all, this is one of those things where we're trying to get all of our chapters and all of our guys, all of our directors of recruitment to understand this, to know it inside and out, and to be able to try to, you know, live it and share it with our chapters. So I'm going to dive right into this. So dynamic recruitment. The first thing I want to talk about when I talk about our SIGTAL growth system is the idea of dynamic recruitment. Now, dynamic recruitment is something that we have worked with our partners and fired up to identify is our main way to go about this. So instead of event-based recruitment where you know, maybe in the 80s, 90s, maybe even like 10 years ago, you would put together a recruitment graphic and you would put them up all over campus and you would put together big events and just expect people to show up and be like, you know what, we did it. They're just going to come to us now. That is more of an event-based recruitment, which has typically been what the recruitment practices is that fraternities have used for the past couple of decades. We can't do that anymore. That doesn't work anymore. We really need to focus on dynamic recruitment, which really focuses on doing 365 recruitment, making friendships year-round, building authentic connections. And so it starts at the top with the prospect pool. This is absolutely one of the most important things to know when it comes to our SIGTAL growth system, but also the entire theme of dynamic recruitment. We need to make sure that we have a huge prospect pool. We need to make sure that we have as many people that we can talk to to try to figure out whether they're a SIGTAR or not. The higher quantity of PMs and people that we have in our prospect pool, the higher quality of brothers that will result from that, or bids, or new, however you want to put it. So, first and foremost, we want to make sure that our prospect pool up top is full, right? Or we fill it as much as possible. And there's a whole lot of different ways that we can do that prospect pool. So, Starting at the left here, and I'm, I'll work my way across, you know, starting with referrals. Uh, you know, you've got sorority referrals, which is obviously one of the most fun, in my opinion. It's also one of the most overlooked. I know a lot of chapters, whenever they get established, they're like, no, like, we don't want to do that because we don't want to look desperate to the sororities. But the sorority women around campus tend to know some good fellows. They tend to know non-Greeks as well. And that's what we're looking for. And if you have a good relationship with a certain organization, whether it be sorority or any other organization on campus, you can go to them for referrals, and that is one of those ways that you can take their suggestions and add that to your prospect pool. So that's just one of the many ways. You've got summer recruitment. Um, maybe you have your summer orientation, and I know this doesn't necessarily apply to this summer because of the virus, but you know, let's think about the fact that some of our universities and some of our, camp, uh, some of our chapters participate in summer orientations where maybe 10 times throughout the summer, they'll be able to set up at a table at a fair, and they're meeting incoming freshmen, they're at the orientation, they're answering questions, they're putting their face out there. Through summer recruitment, they're going to be able to bring in names. So that's another way that they can add to their prospect pool. And, you know, there's no necessarily need or no strong need for me to go in and, you know, break down every single one of them in a paragraph. But just know that there's a lot of different ways that you can add names into your pool. And that is one of the first things that we want to focus on. We want to meet as many non-Greek men as possible, put them into our pool, 
because then we're going to put them in a funnel. And we'll talk about that here just next in a second. So after we have our prospect pool, we're going to use chapter building. Now, unfortunately, there's way too many of our chapters that don't take advantage of this. When I look on and I look at the analytics, there's some chapters that haven't been on in over three years. And that's a problem because Chapter Builder is guaranteed to help your recruitment efforts in every single way. It is your streamlined platform that allows for you to keep up with your potential new members, share your thoughts together, and all in all, streamline and organize your process more than an Excel sheet or a Google Doc or a piece of paper ever could. So Chapter Builder is one of those things that like, we really need to make sure that we're using to the best of our ability because it is guaranteed to improve our recruitment efforts. So to Peter, to Eric, to anybody else that may be seeing this, if you don't know what Chapter Builder is and you want to know more, email me, call me, let's set up a time. I want to make, excuse me, I want to make sure that all of our chapters are self-sufficient and really know what they're doing with this. So from Chapter Builder, we're using Chapter Builder. We have a whole bunch of names that we've added to Chapter Builder because we, we have a really big pool up here. You know, we, we're using these designated pipelines like referrals and summer orientations and different name drives and the IFC recruitment names list that you get. We took all those names and we put them in a chapter builder. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use chapter builder to help us in contacting these guys through calls, text messaging, you know, slide a little DM in there, you know? This is one of those ways where we are trying to make our point of contact with them and just introduce ourselves. Now once we're on chapter builder, we wanna to try to focus on moving it down the list of moving into small activities. So a small activity could be a one-on-one -on -one lunch encounter, it could be a you know, you and two other guys are playing a FIFA tournament. You guys could pop on and play a virtual Call of Duty Warzone and catch a win that way. I mean, small activities are meant to, for you and a potential member to get into a smaller environment where there is the room to be vulnerable, to get to know each other. You know, it's not always ideal to be able to have some large blowout recruitment event where you're cooking up a bunch of frozen Costco burgers and hot dogs that taste like crap anyway. We don't want to be focusing on these large events right off the bat. They have their place, but we want to make sure that we start small and then introduce them to these bigger events so they can meet other potential new members and other brothers. From small activities and through creating an authentic connection and experience with people, we want to start using tangible, measurable ways for us as SIGTALs and for our chapters to determine whether someone is a right fit. So no more of, oh, he's a good guy, Oh, he's chill. Oh, bro. He's my roommate's bro. He's going to be a good bro. You see what I'm saying? This stuff sounds kind of silly. We need these conversations to be less of, yeah, he's, good. he's a good guy. To, you know, yeah, he, he did have a 3.2. You know, he, he consistently volunteers at least twice a month. I mean, we need tangible things that we can use to determine whether someone brings value into our organization and we select the right members. So that's all the values-based selection is. And we'll talk more into that. This is just kind of a general overview of dynamic recruitment here. So we have a prospect pool. We put them in a chapter builder. We focus on small events and other events to build connections. We start filing those out by having tangible measures of, well, maybe he's not a fit. Okay, this guy, he's really great. Then we start to move into the pre-close phase. The pre-close phase is when they're so close. Like you can see that they're interested. You can see that they're just a little bit hesitant to and the pre-close is us like meeting one-on-one -on -one as men and being like, hey man, you know, how can I how can I make sure that this is a 100 percent yes for me? How can we get you there? That's what the pre-close is. You know, either he says no or we say no due to the values-based selection criteria, and we add him back in a chapter builder or we extend the bid and he signs. So all in all, this recruitment model right here of dynamic recruitment is something that every chapter should look at, take advantage of. It's going to be a part of the recruitment plan template that will be coming out next week as well. So all in all, if there's something to keep your mind on and look at whenever it comes to your entire chapter's recruitment and your membership efforts, this is one of them. So we're going to simplify this because I know that was a little much. I know we were talking about dynamic recruitment and about we don't need to focus as much on events. We need to focus more on building relationships and doing that year round. We're going to break it down even simpler, okay? So. I want you to picture a funnel, right? You know, whatever funnel it may be, whether it's the one you change your oil with on your car or what, <laughs> there's other funnels, but we're not going there. So we're gonna look at this funnel right here. Now imagine the top of this funnel, right? We got a wide mouth right at the top. 
This is where we want to put as many names into this funnel as possible. Going back to our prospect pool, we want to make sure that we can cram as many people that you know we haven't met into this funnel. So then, as they go through the process and as they get towards the end, we're choosing the right guys. So number one, put more people into your recruitment process. You want to make sure that your pipelines of sorority referrals, tabling that brings in names, your orientation efforts, your your names drivers that you and your brothers do. All those names that you've got, put them in your funnel. Now that you've put them in your funnel, they're going to start to naturally kind of, you know, make the mold of the funnel and start to move its way down. So the middle part of this funnel is small activities, conversations, putting together recruitment events. This is where in the middle we want to create an experience that focuses on building genuine and authentic human connection because that's what we're all about. We're in the human business. We're in the relationship business. We want to make sure that the people that are spending time with us get a chance to know us. We get to know them and they start to feel that trust and that camaraderie and that brotherhood. You got to make them feel appreciated, make them feel special to join SIGTAL. That's what we're here. We're recruiters. We're people. We're people people, as people would say. Aye, aye, aye. And as we move down this funnel, we're going to start moving towards the end here. And we're going to start to filter out these people because you may be thinking, Zach, we're always quality over quantity. Why would I want to put as many potential new members in the top of this funnel? Well, naturally speaking, you're going to lose some of those people, and you want to make sure that you get the best of the best SIGTALs. So you want to put as many people in the, pop, in the top as possible so that through these events and through these conversations, you're able to kind of feel each other out and say, okay, maybe not a fit, maybe this is. You know, they start to build that trust. And then as we move towards the bottom of this funnel, we're going to start filtering them out and saying, okay, no, yep, that's the guy we want. We have put a filter in place, as I mentioned earlier, the values-based selection that will allow for us to stick to all chapters and men to determine whether someone is a good fit for our chapters or not. So all in all, the funnel breaks down to three steps, the recruitment funnel. And I know Peter knows all about it because he's been all over the recruitment classroom by Fired Up, and I thank you for it. But this funnel Put people in the top, focus on providing experiences and environment that builds authentic connection and interactions with each other. And at the bottom, we want to make sure that we're filtering out the wrong ones, and making sure that we take the good ones. Peter or Eric, do you guys happen to have any questions right off the bat before I move on? If not, you give me, oh, there you go. No, I don't have any questions, Zach. Uh, that was very informative so far, and I look forward to the rest of your presentation. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Eric. I love how observant you are. You're just sitting there so quiet. You <laughs> like regurgitate it perfectly. I couldn't have said it better. I know Peter in here in the chat, too. He's over here active, too. So, all right, cool. I'm talking to an audience here. I thought I was just talking <laughs> to a wall here for a little bit. But, all right, let's hop back into this. Let's go. I'm excited. So, I'm going to break down each of those steps of that funnel a little bit more. So, number one, the top of the funnel, right? The widest mouth of the funnel. We want to put as many names into this as possible. More, 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 more names. We control our process. We cannot sit back and put together events and put a generic rush graphic on your social media and be like, mm, we did it. They're going to show up now. It does not work. The days of event-based recruitment are gone. As I mentioned, events have their place, but it can't be the sole focus. We have to go get them. We have to know that... Greek life interest is unfortunately dwindling. And especially with this virus, it's gonna bring even more challenges that we're facing more than ever before. So we have to really make an effort as sick tall men to go get them. And that starts by you know, sending a text message, making a phone call, trying to build a relationship with someone. We control this, it is entirely in our hands. And so for those chapters to say like, we can't do it, we need help, I don't understand. Like, you can't sit back and just let yourself get beat up. You can't sit there and be a pity party. Like you have to understand that you have to go up and be active to recruit. People will never just come to you. That's not what this is anymore. It is 2020. Fraternities have to adapt, otherwise they're gonna get left behind. Simple as that. Number two, use Chapter Builder. I've stressed it earlier when we were talking about dynamic recruitment, but Chapter Builder is by far one of the best recruitment resources we have access to. Every single one of our chapters has access to this. There's absolutely no reason why that people should not be taking advantage of this because quite frankly, like we as a brotherhood are paying for it, you know? So if we're paying for a resource that is proven to increase our recruitment results, why not take advantage of it? 
there are free versions that every chapter across the country can have access to, but there's only a few that have a full version. Sigma Tau Gamma is one of those. Chapter Builder is it. Eric, Peter, to anybody else that may be listening to this, if you don't know much about it or you want to know more, you want to figure out how to really unlock its potential, let me know and I'll be happy to help. Your main goal when it comes to step one of this recruitment funnel of trying to put as many people in as possible is you want to meet as many non-Greek men as possible. We cannot recruit who we don't know. It's as simple as that. I know that is very generic, it's very cliche. If you've been on these calls with me before in any way, shape, or form, when we're talking recruitment, you've heard me say it before, but you cannot recruit who you don't know. How can you expect someone to show up to a SIGTAL event or any opportunity if they don't know any of you? It's, it's not how this works. I know for a fact that for you guys here and anybody that may be listening to it, there is one SIGTAL who is that guy for you. He was the one guy that you knew. He was the one guy that was your freshman roommate that brought you to an event, that brought you to this, that brought you to whatever. Who can you be that one guy for? That's what it takes. You got to meet as many non-Greek men as possible so that you can try to recruit them. And meeting as many non-Greek men as possible is going to allow for you to put more names into our funnel, which as we know, is very important if we're trying to recruit. And as my friend Peter said in the chat, he hit it right on the head large quantity of quality leads. A high quantity of PNMs leads to a high quality amount of bids and ultimately brothers. Put more on the top, get more out of the bottom, but the right ones out of the bottom. And lastly, it's an ongoing process. It is 24 seven. No, it's 25, eight, 366 days of the year. Yes, I know that's not how many days and hours and everything it is, but you get my point here. For those to say, oh, well, we have formal recruitment. We can only extend bids, you know, one week out of the year. I'm like, well, I'm sorry, but like you can recruit all the time. No one can tell you that you can't make friends year round on campus. No one can tell you that you can't be a friendly person and look out for other noble gentlemen in your classes. I mean, it's an ongoing process that you always have to be on guard and thinking about how can I make a friendship out of this? How can I maybe make a connection here so that we can put him in our funnel and maybe recruit him to be a sick tall? Because you know what? That guy right there at the other side of the classroom, he's never been late. He gave me a pencil when I forgot one from my test. I mean, I remember he helped Shannon pick up her books after she dropped them at the end of class. Like little things like that. When it's not recruitment season or when it's not time that you're sending bids, recruiting that way 24 seven of like, hey man, like, how you doing? Let's, let's go grab some lunch. That's recruitment. That's what this is. Recruitment isn't always a formal structure. These are your days. This is your table. This is your event and that. It all goes back to dynamic recruitment. We're focusing on relationships, getting to know people, making friends, and that is recruitment. And that is why recruitment is 24-7. It's ongoing. It never stops. So, number two, we're talking about the PM experience. And this is me talking more about the recruitment funnel. So we just talked about putting more names in, right? Putting as many names as possible in the funnel. Now we're starting to narrow it down. We're in the middle, the, the beefy section. Now this section takes the most amount of time because you're trying to get to know somebody. You're trying to see their true colors. And your ultimate goal with the PM experience is to provide an experience that builds authentic human connections. Every single thing you do, from a text message to a phone call to a one-on-one -on -one conversation to a recruitment event to a this to a I'm helping you study to a, my car broke down, I need a ride to class. All of these things should be thought of and done thinking in mind, how am I gonna build an authentic relationship with this person? How am I gonna make this person my friend? So what does that look like, Zach? Well, I mean, it looks like that. And it looks, there's so many different ways that can look. And so I'd say one of the most common and one of the most successful is one-on-one -on -one conversations. You know, be a man and have a man-to-man -man conversation. Don't be afraid to be vulnerable. Talk about some real stuff. Ask them about themselves too. You know, having those one-on-one -on -one conversations is when you really get a chance to know someone better. And then if you're having those one-on-one -on -one conversations with a potential new member, you may be that guy for him. Think about that. Think about some of your first one-on-one -on -one conversations with whether it be a brother or an alumni, whoever it was. I mean, think about those meaningful, impactful conversations. I know I can think back to mine as an undergraduate, but I can also think back to many of mine when I was a director of recruitment, having them with potential new members myself. So one-on-one -on -one conversations, always a good go-to. 
small group activities. We talked about this earlier when we were talking when we were looking at this, uh, the the dynamic recruitment model. Small group activities focuses more on you know having an environment to where you get to know a handful of people better than oh here's our entire forty five man chapter at a barbecue and you try to talk to everybody like like I said traditional recruitment events which I'll talk about next has its place but we got to focus on small first and then introduce them to the bigger masses. And so that's, that's what we're doing with traditional recruitment events. Traditional recruitment events are an opportunity for you to showcase your brotherhood, showcase the size, you know, get potential new members to meet other potential new members, you know, because they may be coming through SIGTAL at the same time. I mean, the guys that are there may be receiving bids too. So you want to give them an opportunity to get to know those guys as well. You know, it's just a general, this is who we are. This is what it is. Yeehaw SIGTAL. Woo. That's where a traditional recruitment event is. So what does that look like, Zach? We're trying to build an authentic connection. Well, let's first start by having a one-on-one -on -one conversation after a meal. Hey, man, this went really well today. Do you maybe want to come over to my place this weekend and uh, kick the soccer ball around with me and some brothers? Sure. Small activity. <coughs> Excuse me. I need some water. Small group activity. Hey, man, you know, Really enjoyed kicking the soccer ball around with you today. Sorry I had to nutmeg you and score on you a few times, but like, just want to let you know that we're actually holding a, a, a barbecue this coming Saturday. You want to come out and meet the rest of the guys? Yeah, of course. Of course I do. Why would I not? I really, really trust you, and I appreciate what you've done for me. That's how it works. You can't expect to go from stranger to big traditional recruitment event and, oh, I love these guys. I want to be there. You got to start small and work your way up to these things. And then lastly, intentional conversations. Every single one of these conversations that you have, with, you know, they should be intentional. You know, let's talk about you. Let's figure out this. Let's ask questions to see if, you know, his character and his principles line up with who we are, what we have to offer. You always want to be focused on having intentional conversations, and not just having fluff. Peter, Eric, anything, anything from you guys? I'm just going to, you know, give me a little thumbs up if you're good. Awesome. That's what I love to see here. I know Eric is soaking it all up. And I know Peter over there with his little emoji thumb over there. He's good too. So all in all, we're going to keep on trucking. So number three, we're still talking about the funnel here, right? The recruitment funnel. So at the top of the funnel, put more people in. As the funnel gets smaller, create an experience that builds authentic connection and builds relationships with these people. Well, now that we've done that, at the very bottom of the funnel, we got to make sure that we are choosing the right members to join us. No more, he's a good guy. Well, I don't know. Let's just put him through the path of principles process and see how he does. No more, oh, he's chill. Yeah, I mean, he's, yeah, he's chill, dude. No more of that. We need to make sure that we have real tangible measures to determine whether someone is going to be a good fit or not. So it all breaks down to these three points right here. We want to make sure that they align with us, they fit with us, and they don't bring risk to, to the table. So align them. We want to make sure that these guys, these potential members align with our purpose, values, goals, and they qualify for membership. Now, alignment may be tough for you to measure, but I'm going to talk about that in this next slide. And I'm going to give you tangible ways for each of our six principles of how you can determine whether someone aligns with who we are, what we're trying to do, and what we stand for. So first and foremost, we need to make sure that they align with SIGTAL and what we're trying to do here. Number two, probably the easiest one to explain and the one that may be hardest to gauge sometimes. Fit with the group. Does he feel like a brother? Do people like him? Can people vouch for him? Do they feel like he's going to be a good addition to the group? I mean, I can't tell you whether someone fits with your chapter. This is entirely up to you and your brothers to decide this. So this is one of those where it's like, uh, I don't know, man. I got a weird feeling about him. I don't know if I can vote yes on him or yes, like, Every single time he comes out, we're always having a great conversation. He really wants to be a part of this. And I'm, I'm just so proud to see that he's, he's grown in the week with us. Yes, he fits with the group. So if we can make sure that he aligns and he fits, that's two of three. The last thing that we want to manage and try to measure is the risk. Is he a violent risk? Is he going to start drinking and start trying to fight brothers at a party? Is he going to, you know take advantage of one of our female guests at an event when he shouldn't be? Is he going to be a financial liability by not being able to work and pay his dues? Is he going to have a substance abuse issue? Is he going to try to sell drugs out of the chapter house? I mean, 
these are all crazy things that you may be like, okay, Zach, but I mean, it's the reality. We want to make sure that we're evaluating these guys to see if there is any risk like that. So at the end of the day, when we're looking at a certain potential new member and we say, you know what? He exhibits five of our six principles. He aligns with who we are, what we're trying to do. He fits with the group. All my guys love him. It was a unanimous yes vote. And he brings no risk to the table. Could you ask for anything better? There you go. That is the right member we want to bring in a sink talk. That is the noble gentleman that we want to make sure that we have for years to come and hopefully into our next century. 100 years, baby. So alignment. I know I was just talking about alignment. And how does it align with our principles? How does it align with what we're trying to do? Well, we as Sig Tall have identified tangible measures for every one of our principles. For the six principles, we've identified ways that you can you know, learn about him or ask questions that will basically see if he exhibits these. So actually, I'm going to ask you guys to participate a little bit, if you don't mind. To Eric or Peter, what would maybe be a tangible measure that you could try to look for to see if someone determines or exhibits the principle of learning? His grades. Yeah, spot on. I mean, that's it's pretty, yeah. <laughs> so we want to make sure that he has, obviously, within at least a 2.5 cumulative GPA. It may be different on your campus. So whatever that minimum is for your campus, you want to make sure that he's at least maintaining that. And so that's just the bare minimum of what we're looking for out of the principal learning. So if you learn that he's got a 2.2, well, he can't go through recruitment because he shouldn't be able to because it's required to have a 2.5. But if you learn that he's got a 3.4, you're like, okay, principal learning, got it. Okay, one is six, check. And also I want to let you know that if you think that these are a little bit lax and you want to increase them for your chapter and say, you know what, like, I don't know if he'll really exhibit learning if he's in the twos. Like, we want to make sure it's a 3.0. Go for it. This, you can change this. This is your own value-based selection criteria. This is just us as a staff determining what we think it should be, or at least what the bare minimum should be for these six. So what do you guys think about integrity? I know that's kind of a hard one to measure. I would say, Zach, with integrity, that is he going to be able to be entrusted with the secrets that we have as brothers that we don't share those with non-affiliated members, making sure that those are entrusted within our own chapters and the fraternity as a whole. Spot on, man. I mean, that's, that's great. It's very important to be able to keep our ritual, keep our secrets secret. I mean, it's what makes us special. What makes it cool. It's what makes it exciting to attain whenever you go into the chamber and you become initiated for the first time. You're like, what? Like, that's what that means? So I agree with you. Peter, do you have anything else to add to integrity? No, um, I'd say maybe with integrity, he sticks to it. If he says he's going to be there, he's going to be there at that time kind of thing. Did you know that's what I was about to put up on the screen? <laughs> no. Does he say what he will do? He shows up when he says he will. He communicates. And I'll tell you what, right, guy, like right now, this is, this is my – Sigtal hat off. Well, no, it's you always wear your letters. My Sigtal hat is always on. Let's be real here. For me, when I'm looking at a potential new member, if he doesn't have integrity from day one, it will never work out. Ever. Like, this is an absolute must have. You know, he may be, he may have five of six, but if he doesn't have integrity, uh -uh. sorry, I don't want it. Because the thing is, if you don't come to college as an 18 year old grown man with that integrity of how to be, how to be decent to other people, I'm sorry, but like that's a parent parental breakdown. And like, I'm not here to be your dad or your mom and try to teach you how to be a good person during the path principles. We can't do that. We can teach you how to learn. We can teach you how to be a brother. We can teach you how to be a good citizen to the world. We can teach you all these other things. But I can't teach you how to be a good person in the path principles and expect you not to mess up something or the chapter. Like, I personally will never feel comfortable trying to extend someone a bit that does not exhibit the principle of integrity. So that's my personal take. I don't know if you guys agree with that. You may agree with it, but for me, one, like, must have to get a bid from me. He got five of six and no integrity. Mm, it ain't working for me. So excellence. There's a lot of different ways that we can determine excellence, although we do know that excellence is not something that you just reach and stay at. It takes constant effort. So excellence, in my opinion, of our six principles, 
is the overarching what you achieve if you exhibit the other five. If you're showing that you're a good man that is full of integrity, that's learning, that's a leader, that's a brother, that's a good citizen for the world, that is what excellence is. Excellence is not just, oh, we're here, we won the queue, and stays there. It takes consistent effort and sacrifice and discipline to be excellent. So one of the ways that we've determined you can align that, and that's kind of hard to determine, is have at least a 3.0 cumulative GPA. Uh, maybe he's received an award or scholarship on campus, and he demonstrates and communicates overcoming adversity or struggle. So excellence and integrity are some of those that I would say are a little bit more up for interpretation for our chapters. So if they wanted to try to define that on their own and say, I, like, I don't know, I don't know how I feel about any of those. I want to redo them. Go for it. I just would love to see our chapters adopt a way for us to tangibly measure ways that we can determine whether a potential new member has each of our principles. Leadership. He's involved in another student organization or team member on the varsity team or student government. Self-explanatory. Citizenship. Can he speak to meaningful service? Does he say that he's involved? Does he show that he's involved? Does he show a willingness to be a bigger part of himself? Does he vote? If you don't vote, I don't want to hear anybody complaining. And that's to anybody listening to this. To my audience that may be listening to this, if you don't vote, I don't want to hear it. That is one of the easiest ways for you to exhibit the principle of citizenship as a sick talk. It is our right, it is our privilege, it is our freedom as an American citizen. And if you don't vote, I don't want to see it on social media. Period. Brotherhood. Another one of those ones that may be kind of hard to identify in a tangible way, but you and your chapter could work to define this. Brotherhood. Does he demonstrate a willingness to help those? Uh, maybe this potential new member was a roommate to a certain brother and a certain brother got really sick and broke a bone and needed a ride to the emergency room and that person stepped up to it. That's some brotherhood if you ask me. You know, if, if you're going through recruitment and you get a flat tire after a recruitment event and Joe Schmo, who's a PNM, comes up and helps you change your tire and helps you get home safe, that's brotherhood. So it looks a little bit different for everybody. I know that. But if you can determine a tangible way to me measure each of these six principles, you will be able to determine whether he aligns with what we're trying to do. So for me, I don't feel comfortable extending a bid unless they absolutely have integrity. Aside from that, they have to have four and above for me to say yes more than likely. Now, if they're at a three or six and they've got integrity, I'm like, ah, let's, let's look at this. But for me, Integrity is a must-have. You've got to have at least four or six to be a serious consideration for me. What about you guys? What do you think about that? Is integrity one of those must-have for you? Or what is the amount of principles that you have to be considered for alignment in your eyes? I would say for me, Zach, um, I would say all six of them. Definitely integrity is one of the key ones. Um, for them to have all six principles, it means they're a well-rounded gentleman and they're going to represent the fraternity not just during the undergraduate experience that they'll get, but also as an alumni in the real world where they're out in the workplace, they're out with dating another person possibly, something like that, where they're going to represent and exercise those principles out in the world. I like the high standards, my friend. I will say it may be a little bit difficult to find a six-star prospect, but you know, if you can, sign that man to a bit immediately. Because I'm still looking for him myself. I don't know if I've ever met a six of the six. But, I mean, if that's the standard you want to hold for, you know, Whitewater, then go for it, my friend. I think that that's very commendable. What about you, Peter? What do you think your Zeta 5 guys are going to think on this? Uh, I'd say, obviously, you always want all six. Um, I feel like they have four. Um, but if integrity is not one of those four, then I feel like integrity is definitely, I think, one of the key ones. Because, like, if a guy ain't able to – like what it says, show up to events or be able to communicate. Like that's from a chapter president standpoint, that's what pisses me off the most is when guys just don't communicate. Yeah. I know that. I know that all too well, my friend. I hear you on that one. Let me a little snap in the box for that one. Goodness gracious. Yeah, I mean I definitely can agree with that one. Um, it's a little frustrating when when you're trying and you're doing and you know what's going on and you're putting in effort and people just aren't in the slightest bit. So I mean, that's where it's really important to try to determine what these principles and how to measure them are. Because if we can determine that and see that someone doesn't exhibit that from day one, then we won't initiate them. We won't extend them a bid. I mean, this is, this is the filter. You know, like if we're looking at the funnel 
and we have a filter that people are following through. This is it. This is literally what we're trying to push to all of our people. So no more, I don't know this guy. He looks like a good dude. He played football in high school. We can help our intramural teams. We don't need that. You know, we need tangible things. And my little ooh, fat voice, I'm not mocking you guys at all. I just taking some inspiration from our friend Josh Randy. He does it real well. I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to see if I can make mine too. Anyway, so we're going to keep on pushing through. So just a refresher on that, values-based selection criteria. Alignment. We want to make sure that they align with our values, our purpose, our goals, what we're trying to do. How do we measure alignment, fellas? They fit all six principles. If they do, then sign them right then and there. But for some people, it may be four of six, five of six, whatever it is. We just want to measure that alignment by those six principles and those tangible measures for each principle. I would say for me, Zach, it's how they're going to be able to leave hopefully a positive and rewarding legacy for the chapter and Sigma Tau Gamma overall as a fraternity. Were you going to go to Centennial this summer? <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about it. Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely an opportunity that definitely crossed my mind, but uh, this is a great alternative that um, Sigma Tau Gamma at the national level is doing a great job with. Well, I'm glad to see that you guys are taking advantage of it because there's a handful that aren't. And this is this is what we're doing. So when people ask, you know, what is Sigma Tau doing right now? What is headquarters doing? Well, I mean, we're, we're trying to do this, you know? So for those people that aren't taking advantage of it, it's their loss. And for you guys, it's even more gain. And I've been saying it to the other people on staff. I seriously think that, you know, Carol's going to blow everybody out of the water in the northern part of the world. But, I mean, then again, Whitewater, you're right there, too. You guys are right there in Wisconsin, too. So I'm pretty sure the whole Wisconsin state is about to blow off the map for Sigtal, in the best way possible, that is. So you guys are putting in the work, and I love it. I'm so happy to be able to, you know, work with you guys. So anyway, getting back into that off my high horse here. I'm not trying to gas you guys up and blow your head up too much here. Um, fit. We want to make sure they fit with the group. That right there, kind of hard to measure. It's just a matter of your gut feeling of what you get from your brothers whenever you're talking about that. Um, Wisco takeover, yes sir, couldn't agree more. And risk, we want to make sure that they don't bring a lot of risk to the table. I mean, if, if they have four of the six principles and the brothers are like, yeah, he's really cool, but then you learn that your friend in a whatever whatever sorority learns that uh he, he he's a little weird about you know whenever he gets around you know girls in a social setting maybe he should maybe he should be mindful of that you know that would be a red flag go like okay like that's a little bit of a risk we need to address this and so on so at the end of the day if we can see that he aligns with our principles he's a five out of six star prospect he fits with the guys and he's low risk you just check the three boxes fellas that right there is someone that we want to so talk down So as we wrap up, I just want to do a quick refresher on dynamic recruitment as well. This is, this is the theme of us. This is the SIGTAL growth system. This is what we're trying to do here. Prospect pool. We fill our prospect pool through referrals, summer orientation, name drivers, positioning ourselves on good spots on campus, social media campaigns, uh, recruitment scholarships, IFC recruitment interest lists. Every single way that you get names, that is what we're trying to put into our prospect pool. From our prospect pool, we put them in chapter builder. From chapter builder, we put them into small activities. We try to get to go know these guys on a more personal level. As we get to know them on a more personal level and build that authentic connection, that's when we use our values-based selection process of, yes, he lies. Six out of six principal prospect. He fits with the group. No risk whatsoever. Look at that. Free clothes. Do you want a bid? If we give you a bid, are you going to sign it? We really want you. Yes. Boom. There you go. You just signed a bid. If you can follow this model, and if you can follow this, and use me as a resource, and use other chapters for resources, there's no way you won't succeed. Because a lot of people, they don't know what to do with recruitment because they don't have any structure. They don't have a system. And I'll tell you what, this is something really great that I heard. This is a real famous quote. And I've debated whether I was going to say it was from me, but I, I got to give credit. I don't know where it came from, but it wasn't me. You don't rise to the you don't rise to the level of your goals, but you fall to the level of your systems. So if you say, "I want twenty guys," 
you're not going to raise to the occasion and get those 20 guys if you don't have the system in place to support it. This right here is that system, the SIGCOG growth system. Dynamic recruitment, focusing on relationships, putting as many names at the top of the funnel as possible, building a relationship with them and having experiences through recruitment events and small activities and conversation. And then at the bottom, we make sure we're choosing the right ones. That's the dynamic recruitment system. It's relatively simple. And sometimes people seem to overcomplicate it and get a little bit overwhelmed with what it is and what we're trying to do. But this is it. Here's that funnel. I'm just making sure you got it. You know, you're a little hammer. I'm a hammer. You're a nail. I'm just putting it in your head. Recruitment simplified. Here's the recruitment funnel. Put more people on the top. As we get closer down, create an experience that drives connection. Lastly, make sure we're getting the right ones. So question for you guys real quick. This little not even yellow dotted line you see here, what is this filter? What is, what is this that we were just talking about today? I would say, Zach, that represents the potential that those uh, potential new members could bring to the chapter and how they're going to not just make our own chapter successful, but also enhance and positively evolve the Sigma Tau Gamma brand at the national level. You're absolutely right. And I, I love that. That was a wonderful answer. But I'm looking for a little bit more specific. So what were we just talking about that we will use to filter out you know, whether someone's a fit or not. Like, what is that, what is that called? Do you remember? Talking about the purpose? Yes, it, it, that's, that's one small part of it, but it's a, it's a, it's a broader term and a broader uh, theme here. So we're talking about values-based selection criteria. You know, the alignment, the fit, the risk, all of that, all of what we just discussed acts as that, that little filter there at the bottom. So, you know, ensuring only the right members join our organization. That filter is the values-based selection criteria of he exhibits statistics principles, he fits the guy's level, he's not a risk, boom, he checks the boxes. That right there is the, the, the filter there at the end. 